Universally recognized as one of the most prolific designers of our time, German-born Karl Lagerfeld had an inauspicious start in fashion. A lack of talent with a violin and an impatient mother led him to another creative outlet. She said, you, you have no talent at all, we stop the lesson because it's very useless. I don't want to hear this noise, uh, so sketch makes no less noise. That's how I started sketching. At the age of 16, the would-be designer entered a competition. Six months later, I got a telegram telling me that uh, I got the first prize for a code design. And Yves Saint Laurent was in the same contest and he got the first prize for the dress. While Saint Laurent would forge a career under his own name, Lagerfeld's comedianic character led him to create under the names of others. Now my parents are dead, but as long as they were alive, they never wanted their name on a shop or something like this, or they thought it was just dreadful. And so Lagerfeld became the eternal freelancer. First at Patu, where he spent six years, then at Chloe, where he accepted the chief designer position in 1963. In 1965, he took on design responsibilities at Fendi, and for almost 20 years created distinctive collections for each house. I never wanted to be in a house with one label and to be there and nowhere else. I like also the idea of hiding behind the big labels. He left Chloe in 1983 after accepting a position at Chanel although he would return in 1993 for a few years. A year after landing at Chanel, Lagerfeld launched his own line. My way to express myself is fashion, costume, what people wear. I'm interested in what people wear, wear and I wore it for my whole life. Already when I was a child, I was dressed in, in my clothes, in the clothes of my mother, my sisters and everything. I mean, I'm born with interest for clothes. I don't remember that I was not interested in clothes. While Lagerfeld's interest in fashion is unwavering, he's never been tempted by the business side of the industry. I never invest in business. I'm not a business person. I want to be free. I don't want to be responsible for nobody and for nothing. I like to do collections. I don't care about business. What I like is fashion, photography, advertising and all those things. The funny part. And I love to do uh, fittings, I love to sketch, uh, because of that I'm an illustrator, you know. I'm not somebody who drapes collections in the studio. I start from sketches and hardly change them. Eh? I have a kind of vision, put it on a paper. Sometimes uh, they don't even have to make a toile, because the way I work, they, we can cut it directly. Eh? It's a non-stop process, you know. I'm not like many designers who do collections and there's a month's uh, holiday in the sun, because I think that's not inspiring. I like the idea of staying in the fashion world, in the mood, after all. Sometimes one has the feeling that some designers think that in the end they need to good for the fashion world. I'm not too good for that, I'm perfect for that. It, it, it suits me and I hope I will still suit the fashion world a few moments. It's not only hem, hem length, because fashion is not a thing of hem length and, and, and dressy dresses or sport clothes. It's the mood of the moment. There's fashion for food, for houses, for atmosphere. The whole thing goes together. So for me, I'm somebody who likes doing. Lagerfeld's own line has evolved into a sleek, monochromatic collection relying on cut over color. I reduced it and reduced it uh, to very little black and white with a few touches of pastel and uh, that. I also, for the cuts and the line, I, it, it makes a better silhouette, I think. Huh? With Karl Lagerfeld's line, it's the one that most expresses his personality. It's in some ways the most idiosyncratic, it's the most eccentric. You know, it's the most personal. I mean, it's almost sometimes as though you're seeing Carl walk out on the catwalk in terms of like his fondness for the black and white and the uh, very, very slim line of the whole thing. If I, I would say something or if I would be a woman, I would dress like that. Huh? Because I, I'm not too crazy for prints, I'm not too crazy for colors. Fendi is an Italian me, or Chanel is Chanel in a modern way, the way it's done. But Lagerfeld is in fact a kind of silhouette, very graphic and with not too much color, but I think it's very chic on a woman. With his powdered white hair and dark glasses, Carl's looks took center stage. And when he lost 90 pounds in 2002, the fashion world wanted to know his secret. By eating what is good for me, but it's not frustrating, what I am allowed to eat, I can eat as much as I want, so there's never any frustration. I don't eat butter, I don't eat cake, I don't eat sugar, I drink uh, Pepsi Max at all. Hmm? In 2004, Lagerfeld tackled the challenge of designing a collection for chain store H&M. And I must say when I did H&M, it was a very interesting experience for me. I can do the most expensive, like the haute couture, but I also can do the, the less expensive, and I feel totally at ease in both uh, categories.
It's Carl's sheer productivity that amazes most people. I enjoy what I'm doing, so you know, it's not to make a performance uh, of uh, working more than other people. I don't know, I don't know what other people do. Huh? I think it's, it's his amazing, incredible energy that keeps him going. He's just enthusiastic every single day about so many different things. I think it's great that I can do everything, that I have the possibility to do the three things in the best of conditions. Huh? Fashion is about life. Huh? And I, not that I don't care, but I'm open to life. Carl is just a genius at manipulating the press. I don't want to compare him to Andy Warhol, but I mean, he too understood the importance of publicity as long as you manipulate it and use it on your own terms. And I think that Carl has understood that in a way that's completely exceptional. I think he is certainly the most recognized and the most powerful designer working in fashion today.